Uh, thank you, Rev, for that prayer. Uh, it was just so wonderful and marvelous. And uh, I'm hearing about, I wasn't sure, but I'm hearing about my good friend, Patrick Doyle. And and, and so, uh, so uh, I, and I see um, um, uh, Marilyn on the line tonight. So please, uh, I'm going to give him a call if I can, but if not, just relay our our prayers to him. Let us know we're praying for him and the family there. And um, and, and as well as all the other prayer requests, that one just jumped out to me. Um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, anytime you hear, anytime you hear your friend, something happening, you're like, oh, Lord, help me. Not that everybody else is not equally important, but um, being human, you know how it is. Um, we, we 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 run to the rescue, uh, just a little with a little more zeal to those that we know and love and and have relationship with and uh, good people, and so we thank God for them as well as all of you. Um, so I'm gonna stop right there before I get more trouble than I'm already in, and just to say uh, we thank God for the prayer, and we just want to say, Lord, help us tonight. Continue to be with us, and you're already in the in in uh, on the line, and uh, we. We felt your, your 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 power. We felt your anointing. And we just ask that we continue in that same vein, that we may learn of your words, and we may just speak those things that you have us to speak and nothing else. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, tonight, I'm hoping that, because I, I, you know, I know, I see we only have uh, a few folk on on the Zoom. Of clearly, uh, you know, more people, on the, of course, on the phone line. And, and I don't know what the, congregation is on Facebook Live. I think we have those three um, running simultaneously, but I'm hoping, even with the folk we have here, that tonight we can just do a conversation. I know most of the time, you know, we, we have a hard time um, um, managing our time. By the time the lesson is done, we got like three minutes for a conversation. So I'm thinking, why don't we flip the paradigm for a minute and just do three minutes of the teaching and then have a much, much more in-depth conversation. And so the conversation tonight, I wanna to talk about the sign of the time, the signs of the time. And so I'm going, so I'm, I'm sticking with our, you know, our overarching theme uh, from Antioch to infinity and that whole, you know, uh, 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 and then we started, stopped a little bit, took a, took a rest in, in, in Revelation but I think it's so significant, not only in last week, remember we did like a a, a, a quiz. It wasn't a full exam, it wasn't a full test, but it's just a quiz to see where we were with that. But now here, here, here's something, even when you take the quiz, so you, you, you look at the quiz, you took it, it was a self quiz. And so let's talk about that. Where, where are you with that? And let's just say, okay, um, yeah, this is, this is where I'm at because here's the reality it doesn't really matter what where you should be at or what I think you should be at or somebody else thinks you should be at. It's where you actually are that counts, right? And so that's why you do the quiz. That's why you do the test and exam. This is where I'm at. And so it doesn't mean I'm going to stay here forever, but at least I know. And there are some things, and I, I, I love this conversation because people that you assume are are, are somewhere like sometimes they'll be like way far from where you assume they were like, so this is what you believe about it. Like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to accept all the stuff because what happens is, as we talked about last week, that we take scriptures, our pet, our, our favorite scriptures, our favorite sermons, our favorite teachings, and we put them in our hearts and which is good to some degree, but it has to line up to what the current voice of the Lord is saying now through the revelation. And so sometimes we take those things that we have heard and then make them our theology. But then when they're tested and tried and found not to be a hundred percent what we thought they were, then we have to we have to come up to the to the measure where Christ is, right? It doesn't matter what I believe personally. And we and, and we do make that. We say that all the time, which is really problematic. We say, what I believe. Well, no, your belief in and of itself is good that you have a belief, but that's not conclusive. It's what God said is the only thing and not what we think he said, but what he's saying. And we, of course, we concluded last week that we find out through relationship and revelation. 
But I just want to read. So I'm going to just read this one little part, and we'll have a discussion. I'm not going to go into a whole long teaching tonight. I'm hoping y'all don't talk. If y'all don't talk, then my whole little experiment be messed up. But <laughs> here we go. And so Matthew 24, right, 14 to 25, fifth. And the reason why I took this, there's only one reason, because this encapsulates, uh, from my perspective of what I'm talking to you guys, this kind of encapsulates what our reservation, fears, trepidation, all that in revelation is. So, I because I'm asking, like, why, do, yeah, why do we resist revelation? And because we're like, you know, all that stuff that was happening and, and stuff falling out the sky and, and all these other things, it's like that we don't understand and that we don't know. Well, Jesus like paraphrased all that uh, and, and more than once, but here I think in, in Matthew, it's really succinct. And so I'm just going to read it and then we'll, let's talk about this. And so it says Matthew 24, 14. And we start, remember, we read before that. All right. And so now we're at the four, at the 14th, it says in the gospel. So after all the stuff that happens, right, he made he made a, he had a list of things. He said, and at the end of all that, wars and rumors of wars and all that, then he says on the 14th verse, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world after all those things as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So that's that's he made that very definitive statement. After you do, after don't get worried when you hear wars and rumors of wars. Don't get upset when you hear false Christ and all that. Don't think that when you have pestilence and disease and all that, that is the end right then. But, but but he doesn't say the end's not coming. He said now, right? When you when you preach to in all the world as a witness to the nations, then the end will come. But then he goes on to say, therefore, when you see the abomination of nations, or excuse me, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, and we're not going to go on that tonight, but we 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 have to at some point, standing in the holy place, and it says, whoever reads, let him understand. So you, this is important for you to understand. Every child of God should understand what that means. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down and take anything out the house. Let him who is in the field not go back and get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time. Nor, uh, no, nor shall ever be. And unless those days were shortened. Now here's the part I'm, 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 I'm rushing to. And unless those days were shortened, watch this, no flesh will be saved. I want you to remember that part. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. So that means you, you're you saved and holy. He's talking about you. You're sanctified and believer. I'll never leave the Lord. No, he said you would not be saved unless those days. So if you're there, if you're still here in those days, he said, if he also doesn't come and save us, he said, it's, we would none of us would be saved. That's deep. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anybody says to you, look, here's the Christ, or there, do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Now he says, see, I've told you beforehand. I'm going to stop right there. That's the um, Matthew 24, 14 through 25. And that sets the stage to me to a, a wonderful conversation around the subject of the signs of the time. And the reason why uh, it resonates with me, and I pray it resonates with you, is that in that there are statements, definitive statements made, uh, and some others that are equally definitive that may shake you up. But it wasn't it wasn't to shake you up. Jesus doesn't do that. He did it to shape you up, not to shake you up, but to say, "This is what's going to happen." I'm telling you. These are signs. And so consequently, if I'm giving you these signs, and I'm giving you this information because the disciples asked, right? He wasn't, this wasn't something he was offering initially, but his, they, they pushed him. Come on, tell us when you're coming. Tell us what's going to happen. You really want to know? Yes. Okay, here we go. And this whole 
thing. You should read it from the first verse because it's, it's so wonderful. I didn't want to just take up all the time reading tonight. But he's saying these a lot of stuff's going to happen. And I know your theology says that, you know, you cover and just, you know, you know how we are. You just wave your hand and, and it'll go away. And things will be won't happen. But he said, I'm telling you, the day is gonna come. And it's gonna get on us that 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 we're gonna really have to trust in him explicitly. And we're not gonna be able to turn to what we think we know to our our, our Sunday school lessons, our, our Bible classes, our preacher preaching on Sunday, all those things will not resonate right then. I will have to reach and dig into what the Christ that I know, the Christ that I believe in. And even, he said, what, the time will come. And we believe, in to, you know, from study that the times have come over, over centuries where the saints of God have been being killed. And guess what? Strange as it might sound, some are being killed right now. As we are sitting here enjoying uh, this America, there are true believers Spirit-filled people that trust God just like you trust Him, that love Him just like you love Him, that are being persecuted and killed, and and tortured and and just abused, right? For no reason except they love Jesus, and so there is an American sensibility that well, that's them, and not us. You know, this can't never touch us. And that's why I want us to start this conversation. What is, I mean, is that where we're coming from tonight? Is that where you're coming from? That we, because if so, the question I, and I ask, I ask my family, I love when we come together, you know, so if persecution came to us in America right now and they said, you know, we're going to kill you if you believe in Jesus, would you hold on anyway? Do you have enough faith? Do you have enough scripture? Do you have enough uh, resolve to say, no matter if my life depended on it or not, I'm going to hold on. And I'm shocked at some of the answers. Some of them being very, like, I don't know. Some people say no. <laughs> Straight up, nope. I'm not ready for that at this moment. I love the honesty. Like, listen, I'm like, but you, you know, you're, 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 you're supposed to be a preacher and teacher. Like, I hear what you're saying. You ask me a question. You know, what, what, what my mama just said, ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. And if you ask me a question, I'm telling you that right now, at this very moment, I would have difficulty with that. And that's being honest. And so uh, let's talk about that right now. Anyone have any, just any initial feelings about what we read, what Christ said to his disciples, which uh, uh, um, from my perspective, unless you feel differently, I think that extends to us right, as well, that these things, there's going to be some times that come that's going to challenge our perspective of uh, of the scriptures of Christ, and that we're going to have to hold on irrespective of what we're thinking in our minds, because what, what he said that would happen, right, will ha happen. And so that's the one thing we, we're not going to question whether Jesus is right or wrong. He's He's correct. So let's start from there. But him being correct, how do you feel about this statements he's making with respect to your theology, your personal theology, what you've been taught, and and, and what you're prepared to endure? Well, um, do I have it? Thank you, thank you, Pastor. I, I I will say this, you know, when I looked at where you started, <laughs> verse fourteen, and like you said, so much of what came prior to that. It's pertinent to where he he is, um, where what Jesus is talking about. And when we think about the persecution that comes as a result of us being uh, believers, um, and you you think about what that looks like in in places other than America, it's it's a wonder that uh, the the gospel is preached at all. I mean. I think even when we get a little bit of pushback here, even in America, that um, we find it difficult to want to continue to spread the gospel. It's hard because we feel 
um, we feel we will get a little a backlash. If you stand on the corners uh, with the, the 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 box and the bullhorn, um, you you probably get deemed as a little uh, crazy for for being that one that's out there making the the most noise. Probably especially uh, by those who who just get irritated by the messages they pass by and. Then it seems like in in so many movies where the there's a there's a threat of the end being portrayed, and we see the person with the 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 sign held up or something, and it says the end is here and all that kind of stuff. Those people get looked at very strangely, and um, uh, so sometimes it 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 makes it it, it makes it feel like the the gospel is is hard to be preached because we don't want to we don't want to end up being just what these scriptures said persecuted we don't want to be ousted you know or outed or made to feel some kind of way um but and but then it also made me think like is that why we're taking such a long time to spread the gospel because when he says then the end will come <laughs> he said then the end will be once it spread to all the nations so we are we are we slowing the message? Are we holding the message back so that so that we don't we don't usher in that end time? You know, we have to <laughs> question ourselves. Like, uh, who is it the end for? The whole world, or just perhaps me? You know, uh, we have to start thinking about these things. And like you said, what does it mean for me personally? What have how have I ingested this and understood these scriptures um, to mean for me? And now what should, how, so now how do I proceed? How do I go forward? Reverend Crystal's hands up. Good evening. I, um, as I was thinking about, you know, what, what it was that you were, were, were saying and everything I thought about, you know, um, when I was attending um, Philadelphia Biblical and there was um, people from around the world um, in that class and there was one particular individual that was from um, somewhere out in the mid Midwest, in, in the Mideast, I'm sorry. And he was a Jewish Christian. And when he came into the classroom, he came with a piece of paper and um, we saw his picture in the paper, on the paper with an X on it. And it was written in an Arabic language. And basically what it was saying was that he was wanted dead or alive and his crime was spreading the gospel. And so when we think about, you know, like the things that we undertake when we, you know, get rejected, you know, from some trying to tell someone about Jesus and everything, we don't have an, an idea as to what it's like to really put our lives on the line, you know, for the conviction that we have in our heart and to um and to do what it says in Matthew 28, you know, go go into all the nations telling the good news, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And so he, um, you know, and he was here in America to um, to go to school and to um, understand even the more about the Bible, but he never stopped his passion. He would still continue to go back regardless of what, you know, that um, regardless of what was gonna happen to him because he had such a conviction in his heart to um to spread the good news of the gospel. And so I say, you know, we don't know what we would do when we get into trouble. You know, like for instance, if I don't people say I don't curse, right? But let them stump their toe and see what comes out of their mouth. People say they don't would never cut anyone off. Wait until they're cut off and see how road rage overtakes them on the road. You know, people say, I, I won't doubt God if I ever got sick. Well, wait until I get sick and, and the sickness doesn't go away, you know, for quite some time. There's questions that arise in us. There's feelings and emotions that, you know, we as humans um, face, you know, but we have to get to a point where we can, you know, over overcome our emotions, you know, um, and 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 walk in our convictions, and that that's that's a testing, 
you know, that that takes time to develop, that takes time to strengthen. So, you know, um, I, I believe that God gives us tests after he gives us lessons as to how to pass that test. And then when we fail in those tests, he gives us chances to retake those tests. Yeah, man. So, so I want to push, I still want to push the conversation one step further. So, all right. So something happens in this uh, next, you know, whatever cycle of elections, all the stuff. And the next thing we find out that um, uh, we want to get rid of Christianity in the United States of America. And, and, and we want, we're coming after Christians and we're coming for you. And and uh, if you don't give up this 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 way of life, you don't give up your church and all that, you're gonna lose your home. You're gonna lose your money. You're gonna lose your, uh, and in some cases, you could even lose your life. Um, so that's the scenario we're looking at. Um, you know, does our does do can we defend that those those set of actions? As I'm reading this scripture, was Jesus Christ is saying things are happening. So I'm making this up, of course, because in America, it's, it's, it's you know it's somewhat hypothetical that it, you know it, for it to happen. But it could be real. But it, at the moment, it's hypothetical. But with respect to what he was saying, it's happening and will happen on the earth, right? Um, if us being in that vein of of of, of thought. Right, and, and, or in our vein of what thought we have now, can we can our theology endure the crisis that that are happening? And I like what you're saying, Reverend Crystal. In other countries, can can even a matter of fact, I don't even have to make it up. You're right. This is, doesn't have to be hypothetical. Can our theology endure even the crisis that's happened to that the folk in the Middle East right now, for real? Like we, because we have in America a very Americanized theology, right? That says, no, no, all we got to do is my people that are called by my name will just humble themselves and pray. Like it's supposed to get better. You know, we're supposed to be, for some reason, we're just supposed to not endure this kind of stuff where those folk, right? And and, and one of my favorite preachers uh, um, um, that, and as soon as I get ready to tell you his name, Francis, Francis Chan, and Francis said, you know, he's he is Chinese, but he's a Chinese, he's American Chinese. And he went to China and he said, like, he met the people that are being persecuted and they rejoice when they get arrested. They're like, because I because God found me worthy to be arrested. I mean, they flipped this paradigm all the way. They're like, yes, I got arrested for Jesus' name. Yes, I lost my job because of Jesus. And they're rejoicing. And I could only imagine maybe it's just me i can't imagine we would we would be lamenting like crazy cry like god has failed me oh my goodness what is going on and so it's really a matter from my perspective and you guys correct me if i'm wrong i think that we we as a culture have have embraced theology that says that that somehow or other america americans in particular are favored by god to such a degree that we can't, it's almost a, that can't happen. Am I, am I going too far with that? Is, I mean, do, do you have the same feeling that that's true or false? Anybody? That's, um, that's what I'm hearing. Anyway. Oh, I see Emmanuel's hand. Okay. Come on, come on. I would say, um, like, for us, it's kind of like, if something happens to us, we did something wrong. Like, if we in a position that another country is in, being persecuted and, you know, like, churches getting burned and all kind of stuff like that and taking people's lives, it's like, oh, we're not doing something right. But eventually, at some point, perse persecution is going to come. So it's not really dependent on us. It's just going to happen. So, yeah. Mm. But can we stand to be the martyrs that... that that like like in the in the in the bible when we see a guy like stephen you know and that that's where that's where like i think with reverend crystal and you pastor is saying like like 
when it really gets thick and we we see the stones in the people's hand, you know, uh, raised to, and it, even like the, your your friend Reverend Crystal, who who's who got a hit out on them, you know, like can we stand to be martyrs in this time where we are we that dedicated to Christ that if the time came that we would, you know, stand in the face of even the loss of our lives. You know, that's where we have to question our dedication and our true love for him. That's rough. That's rough. And I really think it's our, and I'm going to just throw this in and you guys tell me if you think you're wrong. But I think to some to some degree it's, and I'm going to blame me and and all y'all too, y'all too preachers and, 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 and Manny, you preach too. Uh, that we uh, 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 very often, you know, ha we're, we're easy. People will accept this gospel that everything's going to be just fine. We love, we like it on television. Like at the end, we know that the hero's going to win. Like they're not going to get shot. They're not going to, you know, it's always going to be flowery. It's always going to be wonderful. It's always. And so our perception of wonder, our perception of good, like all things work together for the good, our perception of that word good is predicated upon what we believe is good, as opposed to what God has planned for our lives. I mean, think about all the disciples, none of the disciples, um, with maybe with the exception of John, had died a natural death, right? They were all martyred. Yet somehow, you know, we've we've gotten here without the a, a lot of discussion about wait a minute you know that martyrdom that's real death they didn't like die like a television death they got really killed for real and so we have to say this what we're preaching and this gospel what we believe in that it is cost it will cost us something and sometimes and sometimes it, that 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 safety that we feel like we are old, I guess, because I came to church every Sunday. I gave tithes and offering. I don't know what the reason is that we think we're old. And maybe that's where I'm going with this. It's like we 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 almost have to balance that. I'm not saying preach against that. No, God forbid. But I'm saying we uh, we have to we have to kind of balance it by saying, uh, you know, you owe God owes you nothing, and we owe him everything. And in the, the event and as as Manny said, in the very likely event that it's time to pay, we got to stand ready at all times. And I think this message to Christ to his disciples was is not to put them in fear. We should be afraid. He's like, this is going to happen, dudes. For real, the, the you know the temple is going to be destroyed, which it was. Not one stone on the other. Other things are going to happen. There's going to be pestilence, and there's going to be wars. The rumors of war. It's going to happen. And it's not predicated upon y'all having services and and, and all the stuff. It's, it's going to happen anyway. And so I think we it is very hard in in an environment where everything is just hunky dory to 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 deliver that. But we must deliver it irrespective of that. And that that's that's our Mr. calling. Carol correct? has her hand up. Does she? Oh, I didn't I didn't see it. Sorry. Go ahead, Sister Carol. Good evening. Can everybody hear me? We can. Okay, good, good. So I don't have to adjust nothing. My husband's not here. He usually do the adjusting for me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, you, you know, it's, I, I kind of think, let, let's go back to um, going out and making disciples. As um, Reverend Crystal mentioned, uh, uh, I think she mentioned Matthew 28. Okay, where we're, we're asked to go out and make disciples. Um I think, you know, it depends on uh, what what we do with that scripture, what we do with Matthew 28, what we do with Mark 16. Um, are we going out or are we just um, are we just uh, uh, disciple calling people to discipleship in the church, you know, doing service? You talked about service, um, you know, um, because I, for me, I've experienced very little, you know, 
small amount of persecution from going on the outside. But for the most part, um, I see the work of the Lord going on the outside of the church building. Remember you talked about last, um, was it last week that, you know, that, the you know, who was the church? We are the church, right? Okay. So when you go on to the outside, so yes, I've, I've experienced, and I had to always deal with rejection until the Lord just prompted me. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. Okay. But there is people out there to be reached. The scripture says that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And I'm not talking about just us in inside of Antioch on a Sunday morning or even on a Bible study talking about. I'm talking about really going out there. Emmanuel started a, 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 a Bible study in his in his school, in the public school. OK, how. How easy was that, Manny? How many how many people in the beginning did you have? You know, but going out like I'll go in, uh, to a barbecue uh, and and I'll sit down at a table and we'll talk and you'll get the eyes and you'll get the, you know, and it's not really persecution. I don't think as what we see uh, going on out there in other countries, but you get you you sense you you will get some rejection, but for the most part. People come to know the Lord. They they ask people will come if we just go out there and labor for them. So I'm saying all of this to say that how exp how much experience do we have going out there reaching people and telling them the gospel? Not just in the church building, but on the outside in our community. Like I go on my neighborhood, okay. Um uh I have a, 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 a course that it just keeps growing and growing and growing. I got one Chinese guy. I don't even speak Chinese. And nobody in our group speaks Chinese, but Gordon has got an app where we can interpret with him. But he has joined our group because he was so crazy about what we were doing and what we were singing. Okay. And then I just had another one this yesterday, Tuesday. She left her telephone number, wants me to call her because she wants to come in. So it's like, how much are we going on the outside so that we have an experience of reaching people on the outside? And how much and 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 it should do something to our heart. Now, I'm not saying that, hey, you know, if we get persecuted like like other countries that we would um um that we would continue to spread the gospel, okay? But it depends on your experience and going out there to spread the gospel without it just being in the closed doors of the church. You understand where I'm coming from? How, how much of a heart do you have for people to come to Christ where you would go into your community, where you go into the school and do it anyway, where you'd go into the job and do it anyway? I lost a job because of it, okay? So that's a form of persecution, okay? But the Lord uh, unctioned me and I woke Gordon up and told him, I said, the, it's time for me to leave uh, Pirelli when I, I was working there. It is time. But I experienced a lot of persecution there, okay? Not like, you know, getting beat up and, and like what's going on. But how much do we, you know, uh, for me, I would say that I have a heart for um, for souls to be saved, okay? So for me to um, say, hey, uh, you know, if I had experienced, if I experienced the kind of persecution that was going on in other countries, I am say I'm apt to go, to continue with the gospel. Right now, I feel that I would continue with it no matter what. But like you said, hey, if you had to get into that deep persecution, would you? Reverend Reggie has his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Help me out. Help me out. Yeah, and again, I, I, I can, I can sympathize with your, with your, with your um, testimony about even doing it on the job. You know, one of one of my biggest issues was they they said there's no fraternization with the with the inmates. You know, mm -hmm. so it made it difficult at times to really 
you know, speak to the guys because they didn't want you to form a real relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And when you're ministering to somebody who may not know the Lord, you know, it, it, you might not get through to them in the, in in one meeting. And then if a person is on your on your pod or on your floor for a, a while, it gives you the opportunity to see them more often. But then you're scrutinized as an officer to you know, again, to form a bond this this too too tight, you know. Um, but how so so you're constantly being watched. Um, and I got and I I got I was called a, a quite a quite a few names, you know. So I was the inmate lover, I was the inmate advocate, I was the social worker, I was the preacher, mm -hmm. I was all of those things while I was at the job, you know, because sometimes people didn't always appreciate that kind of stuff you know mm -hmm. um but i think i think in the interim that we still i still continue to spread the gospel and i'm gonna tell you something i think like you said uh sis that um god showed his favor because when it was time when we were going through hard times in the jail they would actually ask me to come and pray for the over yes, 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 yes. And and you know, when we see a clear separation of church and state and all those kinds of things, there were rules that they didn't want you to violate, but some people started to become sympathetic to the 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 plea for Christ and and for Christ because I they knew too that Reggie Harris is always going to pray in the name of Christ. You know, we are lifting up the name of Jesus. So um that was um, a real difference that I, I saw too. But you know, but when we when we are talking about this end time persecution, we're talking about receiving the the mark of the the, the the number, the mark, being beheaded. Those who are coming out of this tribulation, these people are running for their lives. Literally, Jesus told them not to go back. He's saying. If woe for those who are in the winter time, for the uh -huh. woe to them who were pregnant and, and suckling a child. You know, these this is this is a, a, a kind of quite a, a different, different story era. from what I know I've experienced. What mm -hmm. I experienced, like you right. said, is that's light work. That's mm -hmm. very light. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I see Brother Emmanuel's hand up uh, and we um yeah. Um I would say. Like in terms of like persecution and like like um my grandma said like you know going out and stuff like that. Um in terms of like the scripture, one is you know like proclaiming your faith, but like just living it out, like and when you live something out, that means you actually believe, you know, um what you say you stand for. Like anybody who stands for something, they're willing to die for it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's kind of like that, like like Daniel. Daniel didn't really do anything. He was just praying. It wasn't like he was going out his way, but just because he was living the way he was living, like they're like, all right, we got to put a stop to this, you know? And like when um um uh Job, he said um I mean the devil said Job would curse God, you know, um if all these bad things happen to him, if he ended up suffering and stuff like that, it's just because he was doing good that it's like, all right, you're, you're living for God, et cetera, et cetera. And you go through the disciples and stuff like that. They were proclaiming their faith and stuff like that. And I feel like we kind of missed the context of like, say like um, Philippians or stuff like that. Like Paul, like in prison and beaten and stuff like that. We're just like, man, this is like, you know, a good scripture, like I can do all things through Christ, you know, when I'm working out and stuff like that. But it's not just like a, a good scripture, you know, for when you're working out. It's like for real, you know, like being faced with death and stuff like that. So I feel like sometimes we miss the context, like because we're so protected and, you know, everything's nice. You know, we could like go, you know, put gas in your car. You, you want to go pick up some chicken? I like, No, nah, I want a pork chop. OK, you could get we could get whatever we want. So like. It's like <laughs> you have different like like a world that we're living in. So we're like kind of missing the context a little bit of like the scripture. Like these people, like they the reason why they were persecuted is because they didn't want um 
it to get too big. And then now there's Roman rule involved and all this kind of stuff. So like they wanted it to be smaller, but they risked their lives, you know? So I feel like um, we kind of like missed the context a little bit. Like they were like in a different environment than um, we were in. And then again, with that, like, like um, going out too, like and talking to people and like spreading the, the gospel and just living for Christ. It's just, it gotta be our life. It's not just an act. It's not like something we just do stuff like that. Like I remember one time we went, I was out with my friends and then um, like, some people, they just not in their right mind. You know what I'm saying? They could have a weapon or something like that. You know what I mean? Or like be on drugs or stuff like that. But like in those moments, you just like, you know, you just let the Lord like lead the way. You're not afraid. You know what I'm saying? Because if you get this far, you can't just back out now. You just, you know, you just focus on the Lord. So I feel like for us, like we got to understand it's not just um what we know, like, our life but we got to put ourselves in the shoes of like people in different countries and stuff like that that that's also a reality maybe for somebody who uh hasn't read the scripture is not a reality but if we read the scripture we can know that you know that's that could be a reality for us but yeah praise the lord yeah 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 you know something there if i right. if i i can chime in here um right. uh, when my son was going to high school when my son uh, uh, Emmanuel's father was going to high school. Um, I went into one of the teacher's uh, rooms to sit down and it's one of his teacher's rooms to sit down and talk to him. And he didn't say anything to me. All he did was he moved a paper off of a book that he had on his desk just so that I could see. I'd never met this teacher before, but he moved the paper and he, when he moved the paper over, there was a Bible. And then he moved the paper back, you know. And it was like he's, he was stating that it's hard to do it in certain places and in the school. He said, but he does his best to spread the gospel wherever he's at. And I just sat back, you know, and, and, and agreed with him on that. So it's where are you going and what are you doing? And are you really spreading the gospel? Like I said, even on the outside, okay? There are some people are out there, but I'm like, why did he even do that with me? He, he didn't know me that way. And then I had one person when I was working in um, uh, 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 um, uh, a psychiatric clinic. I was working in a psychiatric clinic and this here uh, person came up to, to my desk and he looked at me and he said, well, praise the Lord. I'm a born again Christian too. I didn't have no cross on. I didn't say anything. He was a patient in the place. I didn't know him, but there was another uh, woman that I was ministering to who um, was, who had turned around in her seat. She was, sitting ahead of me she turned around in her seat and she said well you know that's a nice man now this woman was a buddhist okay so you never you know lean not into your own understanding but all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct our paths okay so when you have experiences like that and i'm sure crystal has had some experiences reggie just told about his experiences you know when you have that inspires you to you know, just to go out there and say, hey, no matter what, you know, I'm going to spread the gospel no matter what. And it's and it can be hard sometimes. Like I told you before, I, I had to deal with I had, the Lord had to deal with me and the spirit of rejection that I was facing all the time. But, you know, something, you know, God is he wants us to go out there and let people know before it's everlasting too late. I don't think we're going to be there, uh, 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 you know, all through what Matthew 24 is saying. I believe that we're going to be raptured up, you know, with the, when the time for that, the mark of the beast goes on to the people. They're not going to come on us. We're going to be gone. We're going to be raptured. Time. There's a clock. There's a clock. <laughs> <laughs> that, that takes us back. That definitely takes us back to uh, Revelation and that conversation. We, we don't have time to go on tonight, 
because I'm sure uh, our our clock keeper <laughs> is going to go up any second. But but and I think this conversation is so wonderful. I just would ask. So we are all in agreement. I haven't heard anybody in disagreement that what Jesus has said. What Jesus said is 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 is, is truth. Yes. All right. And to your extent, to the extent that you said, right, and some of us may live through some of it or whatever, whatever portion of it that we have, rapture aside, that 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 things are, are on the earth now and will continue to 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 dissipate um, until his coming. That that was his whole point, that at some point that it's it's going to be where um, his, his coming is going to be um, imperative. Right. That's that's what I did. Anybody disagree with that? He's saying if I didn't come, the very elect, you know, and I know we all say, oh, no, no, I'm saying he, Jesus said, no, let me tell you something. I would tell you how bad it could get if I don't come and if I don't save y'all. And so it's not in our of being sanctimonious and, and holy and all that. We need his strength. We need his guidance. But I think also we need to embrace an a theology right that has us and i like uh, uh manny i like what you were saying that is our life and so mm -hmm. we're willing remember all the followers of christ what when the rich ruler came what was the problem jesus said give up everything you have and follow me he couldn't do that couldn't follow him but he mm -hmm. said if you're going to follow me right you're going to have to be prepared theologically right e even if you don't do it physically you have to be prepared not just actually you got to be prepared spiritually emotionally you know to say i'm ready to give up everything i think in our america our biggest challenge is 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 being complacent like complacency is where we are because we don't have these challenges it's almost the opposite effect like because you know the, we cry about somebody didn't like us oh they didn't like me other people cry because somebody just shot me uh -huh. <laughs> or imprisoned me or took every it's a very different dynamic yet they're holding on sometimes i think in our you know you know how i think we just really haven't been tested to that point and so we have to what stay ready and diligent every day. that's the whole point of this exercise is that we got to stay ready because christ said what you read the rest of that uh as reg uh as um, Reverend Reggie said, you read the re that whole segment and, and down to the end, he said, man, I'm coming like a thief of the night. Mm. You don't know what day or hour. Bo bottom line is you got to stay ready. ready. You got to stay you know, diligent, vigilant, and you can't let down irrespective of if your way has been easy or hard or somewhere in the middle. You got to be ready because I'm coming and I'm coming for those who are ready. So uh, thank God for the night. I, I, this turned out better than I had anticipated. I didn't know what to expect. I'm glad you guys chimed in. Uh, uh, go ahead, Manny, have, have some final words, I guess. Yeah, talk, yeah, one more thing. Um, go ahead, man. Uh, one time I was um, going out to evangelize, right? So this was like, it was like the day I was going to graduate, right? But we had like a, it was a, um, they had like a drive through graduation. Me, I wasn't going to go. I didn't really care. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to just um, put some chalk on the sidewalks. All this stuff about Jesus. So I went and I did that. And I was like, I did it like the night before. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back. So now I didn't go to sleep the whole night. And then... I went back in the morning, so it was like six o'clock in the morning, something like that. Boom! So you know, putting on the the chalk, because basically all the students would go; they were gonna go. So I was like, "What if they saw something about Jesus?" You know, cool. So then I went, and then um, I see some dude. He came, and he was looking at it. I was like, "I'm gonna wait for him to come over to me," because he was looking at, it. he was reading all the stuff. So then, the dude. He didn't come over, but um, they was like getting ready to set up. But I didn't, I didn't see anybody. Yet. But then um, the principal came. He was like, "What's what's all this?" I was like, "Oh, it's just you know, like 
stuff about Jesus, we would see. He's like, ah, he was like, you can't do this. I was like, all right, cool. So then it was like two, uh, it was like a cop, a cop came. And then I was talking to him. I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, so I got to wash it off. Okay, cool. But it was this other cop. And he was like angry. Like he was just, he was just upset. He was angry. And then, so like this janitor, he gave me some water and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just scrub the, the chalk off the sidewalk and stuff like that. But then it was other cops that came and it was like the councilman. You feel me? So it was, um, all these people because they was preparing for the the, the um the graduation. graduation and so at first I thought I was like dang I'm really about to get in trouble because I was like yeah I'm about to get arrested because the <laughs> the um the dude when I saw him like across the parking lot he was taking pictures or a video or something you know what I'm saying he was doing something like that and then when the principal came he was like oh this is vandalism I was like all right I'm I'm like do whatever you're gonna do. And then the um when the cops came, like the one he was mad, he wanted something, like he was just waiting for something. So I remember the principal, he was calling me over. He was like, Hey, come over here, because he wanted me to clean up one side first. And then he was calling me over. But the cop, he was mad. He was he was telling me not to move. I was like, listen, because this was like around like George Floyd. So he just got shot. So I'm I'm like, I'm not moving. I'm like. The principal calling me and I'm pointing at the, the cop. I'm like, he he telling me I can't move. The principal like, come on, come on, come here, come here. I'm like, the guy's like, stop moving. I'm like, yo, listen, this guy, he got a gun. I'm not doing that. So, but anyways, it could have been worse. It looked like it was going to be worse. But then it was like another cop. He was taking a video. He was looking at it. And then the councilman and it was like some other cops. They was helping me clean up. And then they left me there by myself. And I didn't even finish cleaning up. They left me there by myself. So basically, I got to talk to them when it was, by, it looked like it was going to go south. You feel me? So I was scared. I was like, Lord, I'm going to get arrested. That's crazy. It looked like it was going to be like that. And so I'm just praying. But then I ended up being able to talk to the, the councilman and stuff. Because a week before, it was like uh, somebody vandalized. And it was like something about Trump, something about Black Lives Matter, all this kind of stuff. He was like, you know, we like your message uh, better. I thought it was going to be worse. I thought I was really getting in trouble, but so I was, I was scared a little bit. I was like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to get arrested, but it just worked out a little bit better. And then, um, one more thing, um, cause there was a war, the war in Ukraine and Russia and stuff like that. And, um, I'm in this like group chat online and this one lady, she's like, her family's from Ukraine. And so in terms of persecution, one thing she said is like, you know, when like a lot of stuff is going on there in warfare, um, she said they would just sing hymns and stuff like that. So in terms of us, if we get put in those positions, those are the stuff that's going to get us through, just like it gets all these other people through in all these other countries and stuff like that. So, like, I just brought that up because I was in a scary situation for me. I was like, I'm really going to get arrested over putting chalk on the ground. And then it didn't turn out as bad as I thought it was going to turn out, you know. And um, in those situations, just we just... Ask the Lord to just help us, and however it turns out is for good. So, yeah. For the good Amen. of the gospel. For the good of the gospel. That's, Wonderful. That, Wonderful that's testimony. Good. Listen, our time is 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 gone, and and so, um, Miss uh, Destiny has been so kind not to cut us off. Thank you. <laughs> and, 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 thank you. And, and, and others, you guys have been so wonderful in this. So I'm not going to take advantage either. Uh, and, and, and but I do appreciate all, all the uh, insight and the testimonies and and, and this, this is what God can do. But we certainly, I'm and I'm praying we get we, when we left this with understanding that what we got to be, irrespective of what confronts us, irrespective of even what we what we have held as long-term beliefs that would happen or not, right? At the time of the confrontation, right? That we have to be ready to stand fast because the weapons of our warfare are mighty that we know that irrespective of what happens, that at the end, at the very end, that what we, God wins, we are with him eternally. And as Paul, uh, somebody mentioned him earlier, in prison or not, 
I think it was the man you said, right? He was in prison and he said, what? To live, you know, to die is gain. And to, to live, live is Christ know. and to die is gain. Right. Yes. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, putting that in context, he's like, it don't matter. Uh, I'm going to live for Christ no matter what happens. I'm going to hold on. And that same determination has to be our determination as well. All right. God bless y'all tonight. Um, I guess, you know, for, for the sake of um, time, let me just uh, dismiss it and then we'll let you go. Father, thank you right now for this time and for the occasion, for the many testimonies, for the people of God, those are on the line, those are on Facebook. We just thank you guys for hanging out and we ask that you bless each and every one of us. Let us take this uh, to heart and take it and, and let it be part of uh, thank you, our testimony that we live for Christ and him alone. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. May heaven smile upon you. Take care. God, God bless and, you. Thank see, you. Thank you again.